This is Commander Razal Ghul with a bit of a different style video to the usual. Frontier have announced that fleet carriers are coming in Elite Dangerous in 2018. They haven't given any more detail than that, and that's kind of created a blank canvas of imagination around what these things are going to be. The concept I'm going to show here is my opinion, and what I want to see them do with fleet carriers. I'm not claiming that I speak for everybody, so let's just get that out of the way. The fleet carrier should become the home and the base of operations for players. It should be customizable in the same way as ships are, giving players choice both in the function and appearance of the carrier. It should offer conveniences and utilities that come at a substantial cost, not just in credits. A group could be as few as two players, maybe it's 10, maybe it's 12, but an individual should be able to have a carrier if they want one, but they have to bear the cost of that themselves and the running costs as well. So what does a default fleet carrier look like? When you buy the base carrier, let's just call it 5 billion credits plus a couple of thousand materials, it comes with minimal shielding, minimal hull and weapons, acts as a respawn point, stores the ships of squadron members, provides the usual 60 module storage limit, which should probably be increased, provides minimal material, data and commodity storage, let's say 2,500 of each of those, and also provides transportation for the squadron members anywhere in the galaxy. I'll explain how that can work and why that's not an exploit a bit later. For outfitting, there would be a set of attachable modules in the same way as you think about a space station. So they would be visible on the outside of the carrier and further emphasize the building your own home philosophy, building a unique carrier, not just some cookie cutter carrier that everybody gets. These modules provide utilities and conveniences allowing a squadron to tailor their carrier to their particular activity, whether it's combat, trade, exploration, whatever. So what are the different modules? There's a storage module, you can install multiples of them, giving you up to say 25,000 or 30,000 materials and data storage. For commodity storage, maybe it would be less. It depends how, how to balance that without affecting the BGS. There'd be outfitting, allows outfitting and module purchase for normal ships, but only the basics emergency stuff, fuel limpets, repair limpets, fuel scoops, that sort of thing. If you want the best stuff, you still got to go and get it from the normal places. Maintenance allows rearm, repair, restock. Hull package significantly boosts the hull plating of the carrier. Shield package, same thing for the shield. Weapons significantly boost the firepower. Cartographics connection allows you to sell exploration data anywhere in the galaxy. Market connection allows you to sell commodities anywhere in the galaxy. Now, could be a hard thing to balance, but maybe the carrier inherits the market value of the particular system it's stationed in. That way, all you're saving is a bit of time in Super Cruise. You're not getting a huge exploit out of this. Uh, miners could maybe be in deep space, mining their goods and selling it to their carrier, that sort of thing. Strategic operations, like a bridge into which NPC crew can be assigned. I'll explain the different crew positions in a minute and an engineering bay, which allows one of the crew that you can hire, a squadron engineer, to perform engineering on ships. And I know I can hear everybody saying, whoa, wait a minute, that's far too much of a convenience. It's going to come with significant costs and time investment as well. With storage, the material, data and commodity storage on the carrier is a joint pool, where any squadron member can add or remove from the pool. When items are removed or added, everybody in the squadron should be able to access a history of those transactions. If somebody's taken advantage of the shared pool, they can be kicked and have a black mark put on them visible when that person tries to join the next squadron. It's basically an extension of the karma system and that should have been in the game already. How do you buy all these modules? This is a massive ship. It's not just a case of paying some credits and it magically appears like it would work on normal ships. It should take credits, materials and probably time. The materials can come from materials already in storage, the rest needs to come from squadron members contributing through something called squadron goals. Similar to community goals, I'm imagining there could be up to three goals at any one time. This would involve credits, materials and probably data as well. Once you've bought your strategic operations module, now you can hire a crew to fill the positions. The crew provides some big conveniences to the squadron and they come with a substantial commission fee when their services get used. The first position would be a strategic operations manager. This is the big one and it allows a new type of mission called squadron mission to be accepted. Those are only able to be accepted when you're docked on the carrier. It also allows the handing of already completed missions. 
It's a pain to have to travel to the mission giver to get paid. This deals with that. They have a combat rank, the rank increases on successful squadron mission completion, and a higher rank grants better missions. This prevents the need to create missions based on a combination of all squadron members ranks. That's just too messy. This way you have one NPC that has a rank, you increase that rank, you get better missions. Bounty and Bond Contact allows bounties and bonds for all factions galaxy-wide to be handed in, and they take a commission. Has a combat rank, rank increases the more you hand in, and the higher the rank gives you a better commission rate. Power Play Contact, the same, except it's with merits, they take a commission on the merits. Cartographer, requires cartography connection, provides tip-offs on valuable bodies or sites within a certain range has an exploration rank, and that rank increases based on cartographic data sold. The higher rank grants better quality tip-offs or a higher frequency. Black Market Fence requires market connection, allows selling of black market goods, has a trade rank, and that rank increases the more you sell. The higher rank provides better prices. And a squadron engineer, which requires an engineering bay. They are authorized to make improvements if the individual commander has already unlocked and ranked up the original engineer and purchased the upgrade from the original engineer at least once during the squadron engineer's employment. If the squadron engineer is fired, all that knowledge is lost and each squadron member has to fly back to the original engineer after hiring a new squadron engineer and do the particular mod that they want again once to enable the squadron engineer to learn and then provide that modification. They cost credits as well as the usual material costs. So something like 250,000 for a grade one and maybe 2 million for a grade five. The way crew currently work, you use them and you throw them away. It's almost incentivized for you to do that, which doesn't really work. This way, there's a big incentive not to fire these people, particularly the engineer. Let's say you get all the crew up to elite rank, apart from the engineer who doesn't have a rank. Their commission rates are never going to reach 0%. They're always going to cost you something. If crew are fired, you can't hire anybody better than, say, competent, and you've got to rank them all up again. These new types of squadron missions are designed for squadrons and endgame players. They're meant to be hard and balanced for multiple experienced pilots giving high rewards. They only spawn on fleet carriers, and they are multi-stage that can take potentially over multiple days to complete. I think only one mission should be able to be accepted at a time, in order to prevent spamming of high reward missions. The time limit would have to be lengthy enough that a group of players have the time to plan it into their gaming session. The credit portion of the reward would be divided evenly over the number of signed up squadron members, and the material reward would be automatically added to the joint fleet carrier material storage. No credits would be stored on the carrier. Not everybody in the squadron has to do the mission. Maybe 6 out of 10 squadron members decide to sign up to the mission. By using similar mechanics to the community goals, it allows payment to be split over the squadron and allows the mission to function over multiple different instances. You might have to attack a pirate asteroid base and also defend your carrier at the same time in two different instances. These missions with multiple objectives, like hack a shield generator, destroy a tower, leading up to the final assault, need to have persistence of those key objectives. If the squadron destroys three out of six shield generators and then all quits the game, the state needs to be persistent when they log back in. This means the squadron can pick away in these missions over multiple sessions. If these mission PUIs have to be unique to the squadron, and when they instance with that objective, they're effectively in their own squadron private group, I think that's worth the compromise, to have these epic missions with objectives that have a persistent state. So what are some ideas for mission types? There could be a destroy a pirate asteroid base, having to use SRVs to hack towers, the fleet carrier could be moved into a particular body where the mission is taking place. You might use an Imperial courier to land and hack in the SRV, then fly off to the fleet carrier, change your loadout, change your ship, depending on what you need to complete the mission. Pirates would attack your carrier while you're attacking their base. Imagine the excitement of the carrier getting battered around as you're inside there refitting. When you complete a mission like this, it should feel like a big accomplishment and come with some big rewards. Another mission could be a huge group of people needing to be relocated. You've got to discover a new Earth-like planet to rehome them, have a fleet of passenger ships ready to move them to their new home, a unique POI being created above the Earth-like that you've discovered that you can drop them off at, 
I mean, we've already got POIs full of Type 9 seeking luxuries, meds, whatever. It's not that difficult to reskin that. Being prepared for an attack on your stationary fleet carrier, possibly by some hidden faction. Another mission could be similar to the Pirate Asteroid Base, where it's a Thargoid ground settlement assault. You have to deal with multiple warrior type Thargoid ships, take out anti air, take out shielding, infiltrate the base, kill the scavengers, and destroy the alien machine in the center. All these assets are already in the game. And again, your fleet carrier could be attacked by Thargoid ships and they could do some significant damage. The damage is what I want to talk about now. So, if your carrier is taking too much damage, you should be able to dismiss it any time, but that means an instant mission fail. If the carrier takes some kind of critical damage, let's say it's down to 5% hull, it will automatically dismiss itself, similar to the way capital ships work. And again, mission fail. It's not really acceptable, I think, to have the carrier be totally lost. It's an attribute of not just the participants of that mission, but the entire squadron. It's too much to lose along with all the crew. So you do a mission and your fleet carrier takes damage. In nearly all cases, the fleet carrier should be taking damage during these missions. The carrier can be repaired at any time, as long as the squadron provides the credits and the materials. It shouldn't be instant, maybe repair at something like 5% an hour. The cost should be large, lots of credits, lots of materials, to do this repair in the field. Your carrier needs to be at 100% before you can accept a new mission. Again, this is to stop being able to spam these in-game missions. There should always be damage of some description after a mission, and some downtime to repair it. There should be two types of repair available. You can repair it in the field, and it costs you a lot of materials, and maybe not so many credits. Or you can send the carrier off to a dedicated ship repair dock, which is already in the game. This might take more time and more credits, but way less materials, and credits are easier to come by. So the squadron has to weigh up whether they repair it in the field, or repair it in a dedicated dock. How does the carrier move around? Well, a squadron leader should be able to move the carrier by plotting with a new icon on the galaxy map. The carrier then charges its drive, and the time that it takes to charge depends on the distance that's been selected. This could be three or four hours per a thousand light years to make sure that it takes way longer to get there than it would to fly there yourself. This would be something like 66 hours of waiting to go from the bubble to Jack Station. When the carrier is ready to jump, squadron members get an inbox message, they all dock, and then it jumps. The carrier then effectively jumps to the destination in one jump. As with normal ships, there's an FSD cooldown, and that could be a long, long time for fleet carriers. Deciding to move a carrier long distances needs to be a big decision with a big wait time. To have it work this way is going to be contentious with people, but it allows squadrons to be composed of hardcore players as well as more casual players without the casuals being left behind. On the livery side of things, ship kits and paint jobs would be nice for fleet carriers, but how that works with a group asset and microtransactions, I don't know. Maybe Frontier can figure that out. So it's worth repeating that this is what I want to see in the game. Other people have different opinions, but I think this deals with some of the problems and complaints that people have with this game in that it provides content, challenge and reward for end game players. With that reward comes credit, material and time sinks. It increases player storage limits. It gives a sense of investing in and building a customized home base of operations. It gives players conveniences they've been asking for and attaches appropriate credit material sinks to those. And it pulls players with different available playtimes together, whether hardcore or casual, who want to be where their group is when they log in. Nearly all of these ideas are using existing mechanics, existing UI and existing 3D assets, like capital ship repair docks and mega ships. There's nothing in here that's really too far out there as an idea. I think Frontier are going to have to tackle these things one way or another in the future. If they don't do it through fleet carriers, they're just going to have to do it through something else. What I'd also like to see is Frontier acknowledge not just this idea, but the endless list of ideas that get submitted on the forum, maybe feature a few community suggestions in their newsletters, that kind of thing. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video if you've watched this far. Let me know what you think in the comments, and let's see what Frontier bring in 2018.